Johnny Jimenez. Hi, I'm Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to talk to me. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Oh, man, it's absolutely my pleasure. I'm just glad you said yes. It's great to have you. Um, I ask everyone the same question to start. And it's, it's, uh, it always fascinates me to see what you guys will say. Why acting? In the beginning, why acting is, I think, um, as a kid, like you're like, I don't know, I'm fascinated. I was just fascinated with movies and TV shows. As a little, little kid, my whole, all the way to being a teenager, even when I got caught up with like gangs and stuff, I was just fascinated with that. Like I love Back to the Future and The Outsiders, Dukes of Hazzard, the old Superman and Batman. My mom thought I was gonna jump off the apartment building with it because I would have the pillowcase. So, oh geez, she must have been. Yeah, so I was scared. always jumping off oh. the bed in one of the hospitals. A lot of stories like that. But oh. so when you get older, and you think. Well, at first you don't. You think I can never be part of that. And then when it starts becoming kind of real, you just think, Oh, I'm gonna. You don't know about directing and all these other things. You, like, well, I want to be in the movie business, and you think. I don't even think actor. I just want to be in the movie business and be on TV. So that was kind of where that came from, not knowing that there's other options. Mm -hmm. And um, but it was just to just to be part of this thing, this this thing that's like 20 minutes away from us. That we, it's so close yet so far. Because you're an LA native. Yes. Oh man, it's like the dream factory here. Yes. Well, it feels impossible when you're young and yeah, don't know it, better. And, and it, yeah, it just feels too big to grab. Mm -hmm. Put your arms around it. What was your, because you were like doing superhero stuff, what was your big like hero in the movies or? On oh, TV? I mean, it was, it was Adam West, Batman. And I George, love that George, Batman. George That's Reeves. real Batman for me. George Reeves and <laughs> Superman. All, yeah, that was just, um, uh, yeah, I like the TV, the Lou Ferrigno Hulk and the Wonder Woman old school, you know, but it was, it was, it was Batman first and then Superman. They're pretty close, you know, like, like the Flash that's out. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but. I have not seen the oh, Flash. So they got know. a lot of cool stuff in there that brings up a lot of old, like, oh. it was cool. Like we were like, <laughs> we were like a kid and with tears of joy. It was just so good and brought back so many childhood memories. Did you watch or you worked on it? No, I walked, I watched it. Okay. And I watched it with my brother and my son. And um, so that was like cool to have them together. But my brother, since we're the same age, there was just things that were, us older folks were just appreciating more than like the newer, newer kids, you know? So that was pretty cool, but. Like they had tights and they didn't have all these fake muscles. They yeah. had tights. <laughs> it, you know was what just, mean? it was the coolest. Yeah. I still want to. One day buy the old school Batman, the Batmobile, you know, the oh, old one. Yes. I, I want to buy one and just cruise around <laughs> in it all over town. It's so cool, like the old Joker. I loved all that stuff. It's it's my husband's favorite too. It's great. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah I, lo I loved it. And I still do. I still love it. Have you ever worked on uh, some kind of superhero kind of thing yet? No. Because um, I know you've made the transition from actor to writer, director, yeah. producer, and yep. Um, who did I, I don't know. No, I always wanted to meet Adam West. He's one person I did want to want to meet, but I didn't get to meet or work on anything. I, I you know went to a private screening of The Dark Knight. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Oh wow! <laughs> and um, I got to meet Heath Ledger's agent, and he told me some cool stories and stuff. So that was pretty cool, and gave me advice and gave my son advice and. Uh, almost had something going with these guys that did Dark Knight, these producers. So we had friends over there You're that were um, in that world, and it was like so. It got close to getting some stuff, but just being around it was pretty cool, you know. And um, no, I didn't. Though. Like, well, did I? I don't know. Well, man, what happened to the potential project? Are you? Can uh, you say it just, you loud? No, it just it just sometimes it just doesn't happen. Doesn't mean it's not meant to be. Or, for it's a little bit of um i was still in development i guess as a human oh as an artist gotcha so there's part of that and then there's other part of um you know you, now that i know better like you know you these people have a slate of projects right and then like here's a little me right here and i'm a part of that but then it's like you know um 
I think it just really, really, I needed to understand the bigger machine, mm. I call it. And then now, like, okay, now I understand how this all works. And When did know. that change? And what was it that made you really realize, like, oh, okay. Like how this whole, the yeah. whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think at time, you, like, I heard a saying where, like a year in Hollywood is like a week for everybody else outside of Hollywood. Oh, I'm like, yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. You know, like 90% of the people don't return emails, don't get back to you, don't give you that courtesy. So make, accepting that, not taking that personal, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. So then- it feels, and it is personal. It feels disrespectful. Yeah. And where I come from, it's like, it's just not cool, you know? But at the same time, it made you appreciate the ones that do respond. Even if it's a no or a, hey, that's not for me, it's not my cup of tea. It just made those people stand out more and appreciate like, oh, he gave me that respect to email me back or to tell me a comment or constructive criticism. Like that, it was very appreciative. Even when the people that were just not nice to be around, you know, celebrities, non-celebrities, whatever, there's some people that are just not nice and I see how they treat people or treat, treat me. So then it's like, oh, I don't ever want, I don't want to be like that. So, so I needed that to happen. So I don't do that to people. All right. And like I'll, I am taking note, I'm not going to be that. Because it feels so crappy, right? And then the other thing was, like, um, if they're like, if they're when the person so you got all these people that are kind of just just nasty, right? Not nice. Yeah. So then when someone comes in say it could be a celebrity or a non-celebrity yeah. and they're just nice they're just on the human level just treating everybody with kindness I'm like oh cool then it would like give me hope again okay not everybody in this town is is you know nasty or mean or, or belittling to people it's like just a few people but if you keep looking and you stick with it you're gonna find some some good look at like I met you guys <laughs> Yeah, you, like, yeah, you like you find like, the right people. It's like find your your tribe. And that's your what I always I found my tribe. Yeah, that's it. You and find I really your tribe. feel that now at fifty, like I found my tribe. Great. So, um, yeah, but you know, sticking with it is the key. Yes. Like I'm not. I'm just. I'm. I learn how to pivot. There's a strike. Okay, I'll do a play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just right. pivot, pivot, pivot. Like right. just constantly, just whatever you do, don't stop though. Cause, That's great. Because I feel like when you stop, like somebody asked me, like, oh, how long do I got to train for? I'm like, oh, forever. Yes. And he's like, what do you mean? I like, go, what, well, how, what happens if you don't, if you put a brand new car in the driveway and you don't start it? And it goes, oh. <laughs> I go, yeah, he starts getting full of webs and rusty. And mm -hmm. and he's like, okay, got it, got it. So. It's a great analogy. Excuse me, sorry. Yeah, no, please have your water. Because <laughs> one thing that, really stuck out to me about you you know and we're in new re your relationship business relationship the the fact how fast and constantly you are incredible about communication it's it's <laughs> like it's, Stella it took a while to get there it, you're there <laughs> thank you um, and I could even still be better at it but uh, that's another thing that when it's done to you constantly, you were like, hey, that's not cool, you know? So I had to practice doing that to everybody in my life, not just this guy, because he's- Somebody important. Somebody, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, I have to do that across every board. One, it starts at home with my wife and my children, keeping my word to them and being on top of uh, my husband and dad duties and then, uh, and pets, <laughs> and then oh. also, so then it's like your friends and your family just that, just doing what I want. So like, you know, I'm getting calls from, I could be getting, like I'm getting calls right now from a guy doing our poster, and he says, Answer, I'm getting back to him. But then I'm getting calls and voice notes from a mentee mm. that's struggling, and he's still like in the streets, and he just had a baby, mm. but I'm giving him the same, you know, same thing back just replying replying fast so it took years to develop that muscle and I still feel like um, I could do it uh, I could get better at it so it's it's you know where I go through the night and I looked okay who did I miss anybody? who did I I'm constantly it's like I know yeah. I miss somebody who did I miss so yes. uh, it, yeah so it, it took a lot of years and I'm 
And then Ray, you know, Ray yes. Spies, he's, Love he's Ray. so good at that. And he he's a he great example. He's spectacular at it. Yes. He's a great example of I learned so much from him being organized. I'm not at his level yet of organization. And this, but he is so disciplined and all that. Yeah. And it sometimes he'll give me grief. Like, hey, did you give me a text? I'm like, hold on, bro. Like, come in. <laughs> like, I'm trying. You know, like, um, <laughs> I was in the mountains or I was filming. So, like, we'd have service. But he, 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 um, yeah, he definitely, when Ray got in my life, I definitely, he definitely made me like step he brought up. Brought your game up. He, yeah, he totally. He really, and, and, and the communication was one of them and the, and the post production part, like um, now I'm telling him, right. I'm telling young filmmakers the stuff that he taught me and what I learned with Dave. Share out there because yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand it. And it's they're just like, oh well, I filmed it and I did. I'm like, no, oh, you, you do. And then I like, and um, I think Ray had said this to someone recently, where you went all this way and now you're not gonna want to finish the post or something like that. Like you know, you, like you know, what I'm saying you did, it takes so much work yes. to do all this, and now like you got to go all the way through. I feel like you're running the marathon. You spend all that training and you're running in the finish lines. There, it's like, uh. <laughs> Yeah, and then I get it all over the finish line. It's bad sound is not good. (laughs) Yeah, you got to do the whole thing. Do the whole thing, and so I I love it. And and you know, and this is true. I told somebody that I used to hate posts, or I I, part of it because I wasn't didn't understand a lot of it. But um, this last time on the Tesla project, working with Dave, and I'm honestly not just saying that. Like I fell in love with it. No, that's great. I fell in love with it. it. And it was a variety of me um, learning, being have a better understanding, and having more patience, being older. But also, it's the team that I have, right? And um, that's important, you know, the the, the people behind the craft, because you got someone that's actor, director, that's very that knows their craft, but they're like. I don't really want to be around this person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I got, like, I have 20 minutes days. tops with this person, and I got to go. <laughs> right. And uh, so, you know, yeah. This project that you are that you just worked on with Dave, <laughs> um, tell me about it, how you came to even do it, because it's a great project. It's really great. What made you tell it, because it's your story? Uh, there was a time where... Suspect Entertainment, you know, when I was a manager and all that, managing all the, all the, a lot of the guys from the streets, and some were doing, um, some, you know, they were doing, you know, Breaking Bad and Training Day and, um, and Fast and the Furious, and then there were a lot of independent movies in that, like when The Shield was hot, yes. FX, a lot of, booked a lot of jobs on that, and um, but it was a lot of. Um, just a lot of putting out. I mean, like you're working with a lot of different actors outside of the gang with all these multiple personalities and all this. Yeah, it's a lot to juggle. But then you bring in the street stuff where I didn't know at the time, but a lot of us hadn't healed. Right. Uh-huh. So there's like the a trauma. lot of trauma, yep. PTSD, like just, yes, you know, some people with child support and the IRS, like yeah. just all these things, basically. So their lives weren't organized, including myself. And we're trying to do this thing, but that unhealed area in our life was getting in the way, right? So they were just doing a lot of things to me, and I'm sure I did to them, you know, or even to my family, where it just wasn't cool. So it was aggravating at the time. And then when I reflected on it, and I started writing the story, I always wanted to, as I went from wanting to be an actor and I started learning about the business like oh it starts with the script yeah like, I need to write a script one day right so I started like learning how to write a script and right. took some classes and then I um started writing the story and I was like it was healing and I'm writing and I'm like and it started being funny and I remember my my writing she was my uh, UCLA extensions teacher Lawrence and she um ended up being like my writing coach so she would read my stuff. She's like, I didn't know you know how to write comedy. I, I didn't know either. It just, the stuff was funny. Because it's very funny. So it was all this stuff that happened to me that was very aggravating, ended up being very funny and ended yeah. up being healing as I'm writing it. And I kind of had this script and people wanted it, but they kind of wanted to kind of give me some money and go kind of bench me. Do their me. own thing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, something in my heart didn't feel right. And then, um, like I said, I kept doing the mentoring and I was mentoring this guy, Frankie Hernandez. 
And he just really worked really hard. And I was like, man, I, I, like, I like this guy. You know, he reminds me of me when I started. You know, when I started, it was very lonely as far as like the whole like Chicano, Chicanos in Hollywood, right? Right. And I was just like very lonely trying to figure it all out. There was no suspect entertainment, no. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know of Homeboys Industries or any of those places, but there was no place to go. So it was just learning. And like I said, it was very cutthroat. But then as I kind of like, trying to build this team of people and helping them change their lives. Um, so when I seen, met Frankie, I was like, oh, he reminds me of me, but you know, and he's worked really hard. And then I'm like, hey, I dusted off the script. I was like, hey, why don't you do a little soft tape of this and see, like, he's my height. <laughs> he was he's like, phenomenal, this guy. Dude, yeah, we're all so, because of Frankie actor. working hard, that's yeah. your answer. But because Frankie was so hard, worked so, worked so hard, he helped get the project going and, see? and, um, yeah, then we did it and it was cool. And then I said, hey, dude, I'm going to be the friend to you that I wanted when I got in the yeah. business. And then that, it just takes that one person. It, it does. And it took and it took. Um, and the greatest thing that came out of the project, I would say right now, I mean, honestly, the greatest thing that came out of the whole experience was friendships. Even though some of us had fallouts, we, we made friends again and Good. we don't probably kick it or hang out, but we're, we're, we're respect each other and we have love for each other. And then there's some where we have fallouts we, for friends again and we're, because we grow up, you know, we all yeah. started in our 20s. And, but then now, like, the friendships, even from filming the Suspect pilot, like the friendships that came from that was like, it's, it's you can't put a price on that. You That's know, right. that, that human experience of friendship, um, wherever it lands, it lands, but uh, it was a great experience. And I was able to be instrumental and give this, this young man said, I want to be an actor. And he's now he has a, you know, uh, a nice piece of real. <laughs> Boy, does he ever, cause he really does jump off the screen. He's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Manny on that note. Thank you so, so much. That was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, good shake. Yes.